That's Do You Love Her Madly or Just Love Her Madly by the Doors. Uh, and the lovely sound of Jim Morrison there at just five past seven in the morning. Hi, this is Adam. Hey, this is Joe. And we are Adam and Joe, collectively. We're like a kind of uh, a doctor team. That's right. We, we come and we help people with their problems. Yeah. Emotional. Which bits of the doctoring do you do, Adam? I generally uh, stand by next to you while you're working, and mm. I shake my head and I go, mm, doesn't look good. Yeah, I do all the undressing and touching. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've both been struck off yeah. a number of times. I ask you to, to cough. <laughs> <laughs> and then touch you in various places and see what the response is. Joe does most of the cupping. Mm. Uh, we've got a great show coming up for you. Uh, we're going to be talking to my father, Nigel Buxton, a.k.a. Bad Dad. Some of you out there may remember him from the show we used to do on Channel 4. And uh, he's going to be ranting at us a bit later on. But that's specifically tied in with uh, this morning's Text the Nation, which has, you know, grown from a tiny seed on Monday into one of the strongest trees in the bbc conceptual forest <laughs> right well said yeah absolutely in the ideas wood and we, we we've even amended the jingle uh if you, were listening, jingle. if you were listening yesterday we unveiled a jingle for text the nation today it's been slightly amended yeah it's a ningle a ningle a new jingle it's very early <laughs> come on that's the best i can do <laughs> i think it's probably time we played some music in yeah let's have some pigeon detectives this is called take her back yeah that's good isn't it Take her back by the Pigeon Detectives. This is Adam and Joe here on Six Music from the BBC, the Big British the Castle. The BBC. The bastion of British... Uh, content. Contents. Yeah? Yes, there's a list yeah. of all the uh, contents of Britain here within the walls of the BBC. Hey, I've just been uh, reading some emails we've had overnight. Uh, don't forget you can email us at Adam and Joe. Uh, is it at... Six music no. Adam and Joe dot six music at bbc dot co dot uk. We do love getting your um, emails, and you can text us on six four o four six. Yeah, uh, you can text at any point during the show. You don't have to wait for our major uh, sort of uh, event happening, text happening thing. You can uh, text or email us at any time. Text the nation feature. That's what you were reaching. Yeah, for, yeah, it? yeah. That which is incidentally coming up at around eight thirty mm. today. So stay. Is tuned that the best it. time for it? At what time, Lisa, our producer, do, does listening peak for this show? I'd imagine a lot of people leave for work at about eight thirty. Yeah, I mean, or is that good? Do they get in their cars? Well, it's summer holidays at the minute, isn't it? Summer it is summer holidays. holidays. What summer, a sick What joke. happens to the summer? Yeah, exactly. But do you know what? Actually, most of Britain is is beautiful today. Is it? Apart from the south east, yeah. There's just a big cloud hanging over London to punish it for being a contemporary Sodom and Gomorrah. Exactly, for being mm. a giant sewer. But I did check the 15-day weather forecast Did you? Yesterday. I didn't know they could do it that oh, far in advance. You can do it a hundred days in advance. Can you really? It's entirely inaccurate. It's speculative. It's more mainly wishful, yeah. yeah. Although uh, sometimes the 15-day forecast is not bad. And the one I checked yesterday... What did it, it say? It said, yes, Joe, uh, that today's, m this morning's Morning. bad, bad cloud weather... Bad weather will give way to, to bouts of happy sunshine. Oh, happy sunshine. Sometimes obstructed by cloud, but yeah. mainly happy. It's going to be nice in London for the weekend anyway. Yeah. Not that anybody else listening who's not in London cares, but it's going to be nice for the carnival. The London Carnival of Violence <laughs> that will happen this weekend. <laughs> Stabfest, they call it. I'm pretty sure they don't call it Stabfest. They don't call it that. I do. Um, no. Shh. And, uh, and then it's going to get even better the week after that. Perhaps. Is it really? Uh, according to my wishful 15-day oh, forecast. So this is like a sort of trough, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to peak. Absolutely, yeah. We're, yeah. we're through the worst we're of We're kind it, of folks. saving up for amazing weather. Yeah. Sleeper. What are, you, what are your memories of the band Sleeper? And, and there was a lady what sung for them. Louise Wenner. She was around the place when they were around the place. She used to turn up on TFI Friday the whole time. That's right. People would cheer their socks off. Well, she was uh, she was a bright, un uh, intelligent young woman. She's a novelist now, exactly. right? Exactly. She wrote now, a novel. She's written several several novels. Se sev Severin. Severin. That oh man, still very early. This is called What Do I Do Now? Shh, can you? Sh you're, you're shuffling your papers very loudly. <laughs> I want to read the news. Well, you shuffled all over the end of the Did I? the sleeper track. I might there. have proved it. You were shuffling around and shuffling, and there was papers hey, shuffling. What's that? Shh. Past the peas, like we used to stay. That's a bed. That's too good to be a bed. That is quite. A, that is a quite. Listeners, a bed, don't you think? 
We just want to hear that. We don't want it as a bed. Anyway, we'll that's, have it as a bed. That's Papa Don't Take No Mess by James Brown. So listen, uh, yesterday we were talking about computer startup sounds. Uh, and yeah. we were, we were, uh, kind of proposing that Brian Eno wrote the Macintosh. Oh, here we go. Computer we'll startup sound. Well, Peter McMullen, uh, has texted us. And he says that Eno actually created the Windows startup sound. Now, we, Adam and I don't really know what the Windows startup sound is because we don't really have Windows. Yeah. But uh, he also says rumour has it that Eno created it on the Mac, though. But it's kind of not, you know, it's only a rumour. Oh, I it's see. It's not officially known. Yeah. Yeah? Was it aggressive, the email? Uh, no, there are some drawings of us being, you know, uh, attacked. Ugly and stupid. No, there aren't. <laughs> it's a very, very nice, uh, succinct uh email well that's good that makes a change usually it's like you idiots what's the windows startup sound though it can't be better than the, than the, the mac the one, windows can startup it? sound is <laughs> <laughs> that's, what it that's very like. insulting to all windows users <laughs> it's <laughs> that's a sound you might remember from uh the playground from the play <laughs> and from channel four on a friday night nowadays yes <laughs> which i haven't watched when was the last time is you that how they pitch programs for late night channel four pretty now? much yeah they go Got a new go idea in, <laughs> and it's got justin lee brilliant Collins. yes let's, let's have 12. <laughs> that was quite bitter wasn't it that was that was slightly bitter it was slightly example. bitter satire yeah bit uh, yeah uh anyway so i thought i should clear up that whole startup sound thing maybe someone could could tell us maybe someone could describe to us verbally what the Windows startup sound is. Yeah. I like verbal descriptions of, of abstract sounds, don't you? Yes, absolutely. Or if or if you're in a position I to... I don't know where uh, I've ever come across one before. Just play it to us might. down the phone. That would be good as well. Yeah. What would be the number that they would call? They text us first. They text, text you first. Yeah. There's yeah. a procedure. Here at the British Broadcasting Castle, you can't just phone in. Just you have to be vetted. Absolutely. Take yeah, several M years. Yeah, MI6 are involved. Yeah, that's right. Jason Bourne is involved. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, more music right now. This is Dinosaur Junior with Crumble. The language of football. <laughs> Give us some more <laughs> examples of the language of football. Kick, sport, goal, boot, oi, ref, shat it, oi, uh, half time, orange, shirts off, lads, bath, oi, That's good. fight. Now do some commentating for an imaginary football match. Well, the ball is being passed there from Roger to, uh, Roger to Roger, Rogelson. Uh, yeah, ooh, love it, ooh, dear, ooh, passed up the pitch, ooh, dear, ooh, And Rogelson's come in with a lovely move across the grass, and he's moving there towards the, uh, If area. I can butt in Tony, he is attempting to get the ball in the goal. That is his, uh, aim, and he's kicking it to other players in order to achieve that. Look at that ball. Look at it, it's Look so it. round, it's listening, round. little bits of grass on it, lovely powering across the pitch. The ball slowed down now, and someone else has moved towards the ball. Anyway. As you might gather, we don't really understand football. Don't understand Adam the language of sport. It's a bit like, um, to me, as if, you know, you could play a game from the 1930s, mm. and I wouldn't know. The only difference, basically, would Hoop be the, the shorts. No, a game of football. Oh, I see. I Those clips meant... in that trail, they could have been from any game in the last 400 right, years, right. as far as I'm concerned. When you said a game in the 1930s, I immediately thought of Hoopstick because, you know, it's a fun one. Yeah. Anyway, hello, we're Adam and Joe. This is the BBC Six Music Breakfast Show. We've been given the privilege of being able to raid uh, the archives here at Six Music. Yeah, most particularly the Peel Sessions. And I have uh, alighted upon this track. This was from 2001, and it's the Mighty Strokes, the Sexy Strokes. Who's your favourite stroke, Joe? Oh, the one what goes out with uh, that bird off of the films. Yeah. Uh, is that Nick Valenti? No. Probably. Fab Moretti? I don't know. Uh, he, he used to go out with Drew Barrymore. They split up now, haven't they? Didn't one of them go out with Scarlett Johansson? Pro at some stage, I would imagine all yeah, of them did. Yeah, yeah. They are moneyed New York boys. They're sexy, thin-trousered men. And this is a track from their Peel session called Someday. Oh, that's very good, isn't it? That's the strokes with Someday. It's weird, though, with those session tracks, because, I mean, that was almost identical to the album mm. version of that apart from his vocal weirdly yeah exactly he it's... didn't have that uh his sort of megaphone distortion right it sounded as if he was uh, he just smoked a few too many sigils before arriving at the studio there mm. and he was reaching a little bit but um it's 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 a strange thrill that a music fan gets from hearing a version of his favorite track that's almost exactly the same but slightly different 
That's all you need sometimes, though, isn't it? Yeah, I got that with the Prefab Sprout track we played yesterday. Well, Cars you know, that was a good example of a track that, that was significantly different, though. There mm. was some extra mm. instrumentation on there. There was a guitar line kind of following the vocal line. Yeah, yeah. 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 We almost that sounded like real music nerds there. Really? Yeah. Well, it's two bands we know a bit about. That's right. It's un un unusual. I've got a hello to say. Yeah. We we Is he allowed to do that at the beat of the Big British Castle? Uh, it's it's a, f a hello to a, uh, a mega comedy celebrity. Really? Yeah, Peter Serafinowicz. No. Uh, creator, co-creator of Look Around You, star of uh, many great. TV mm, and mm, film mm, things, mm. Shaun of the Dead, mm. and, uh, uh... Stuff? Stuff. Oh, man, it's... I should have written down all the... Me he's one of my favourite... What, are you gonna... Actors. and you're gonna say hello to him? Anyway, yeah, he's working on a new show for the BBC, in fact, I think. His own, uh, show for BBC Two. I saw the pilot. That's right, it's good. It's very funny. Uh, the Peter Serafinowicz show, and he is getting made up right now. Is he? In a trailer. I bet that takes a while. It takes a long time. Yeah. So, hi, Peter, thanks for listening. Uh, right now, here is the news. Bob. Editors. Bob. That's the correct way to pronounce the name of that band. Now, I was watching them on telly the other day on one of the festival coverage programs. Oh, yeah. And they, the editors were playing away. Not all... the editors. Sorry. Oh, no. Oh, you are the Sorry, I was talking about a different band. I was talking about a different band. I was talking I've about a different band, seen. different, different, different band called The Editors. Oh, right. But what I meant to say was editors were playing along all dressed in grey with their grey backing and their neat haircuts. Mm. And it cut to the wings and there was Edith Bowman. She goes out with Mr. Editor. There we go. She was, like, bopping her head. She knew all the words. Mm. And I thought, she's a big edit editor's fan. She's the biggest. And then Adam Buxton told me that she's snogging one of them. Can't get, can't get bigger than that as a fan. Really? Yeah. No, you can't. I mean, that's, that's the dream of all the fans. Is it? Yeah. It's like Mrs. Newman. You know, Gary Newman's wife? That's right. She was, uh... Her, um, Gary was her number two. She had a hero. list. We know this because, again, we filmed with Gary Newman a, a while ago, and we went and filmed a thing at his house, and uh, she told us all about this. She had a list. Gary Newman's wife had a list of stars yeah. that she wanted to marry. And was Bowie number one? I think Bowie was the number one star. And who was number two? Numenoid. Numenoid was number two. Yeah. So she shot for Bowie. Uh, she didn't get him. Didn't get Bowie, but she got Gazza. And, and she, they're, they're, very, they're a lovely couple. They were lovely. I'm still very much in love. Still yeah. very happily married. Saw them in Hello the other day yeah. in their in their castle, their really? strange gothic castle. That Are they, they live still in. living there? I thought that was maybe I think demolished. They, or I something. think they. Well, they're they're living somewhere that looks very similar. So really, has fluffy handcuffs hanging mm. on the ceiling. What would happen if Bowie made a pass at her? At her? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you reckon if they were at some festival or other? Do you think you know? There's that thing that some couples have. They have a special sort of get out clause. Yeah. If a famous person, you know, they say, well, look, I'm, I'm faithful to you for all my life. That's right. But if George Clooney ever winks at me. You're allowed. I'm allowed. There's a good episode of Entourage where that happens. Really? Yeah. Um, and the, the guy's wife is allowed to sleep with the main bloke, Vincent Chase, and it happens. She bumps really? into him in a shoe shop. But, um, yeah, what would, who would, who would you want to be? Ooh, who would your get out that. clause lady be? I gotta think about that. Should we play some music and I'll think about it? Because that's a big question, man. You it can't is just, a big question. Can't just spring that on a guy. I'm thinking Nastasia Kinski. Ooh. Circa 1984. Thanks so very much. So mine involves time travel. That's possible, theoretically. This is Iron and Wine with Boy with a Coin. The mighty Harry Hill. I'm so excited about that. It, it, we're hyping it, aren't we? Absolutely. Well, we can listen to that on Monday after we finish the show. Yeah, that'll be good. It's like the release of Batman, the first Batman film. He's a genius, Harry Hill. He's good, man. And you know who else is a genius? Is Al Me. Murray. Me. He was on a show uh, I did the other day. You're not a genius. Come on, yes, By I am. no means. Come on. In what way are you a genius? I'm j I've got all kinds of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> What's your best idea? I can't tell you. They're too hot. Come on. They're too hot to say. Give us one idea. No. Come on. I can't. They're too good. Write one down for later, okay? All right. All right. One idea that proves you're a genius. Shoes <laughs> with words on the soles. <laughs> Not that you one again. dress in puddles and you print the words. <laughs> anyway, we were talking about who would your celebrity uh, person that you're allowed to sleep with be. And Yours would be Al Murray. Maybe it would be Al Murray. I really do think he's great, Al Murray. I was, I've forgotten. He's one of those people that's so um big and successful in a way but he's got like a big hardcore of fans but he's not like taken that seriously i get the impression as as like a cutting edge comedian and stuff but 
maybe that's just my misconception but he's brilliant like he's amazing he's the quickest on his feet i've ever seen anyway uh i might sleep with him but if if i had to sleep with a woman it would be mary elizabeth mastrantonio really yeah now she's, yeah she's lis the listeners might know her as the lady in the abyss james cameron's the abyss has yeah. she been any in anything since that since she was in the yeah, abyss yeah nothing quite so big i don't suppose she was in a film called consenting adults as well oh, do you remember that one that sounds there, crazy there was a lot of wife swappery going on in there and i was delighted um but yeah she was in the abyss what an amazing scene in the abyss where she she has to drown in order to be swum out by uh ed harcourt what's his name <laughs> harris ed harris and <laughs> ed harcourt would never make it um ed harris has to swim around he's got the breathing gear and he's the best swimmer so she has to drown and drag her to safety and then revive her horrible business oh man it's the most amazing scene in movies uh, for me one of them anyway and i always kind of envy her because he gets to snog master antonio and revive her and she's eternally in death. really that's one of your sort of fantasies is it yeah a nearly dead woman <laughs> spewing water into your face yeah. how very sensuous that is as sexy as it gets for me listen it's uh, archive session track time i'm excited about hearing the woman again close her big sexy door and say my name in a in an in, in an exciting fashion um i chose some stuff from everything but the girl because I used to be a big fan of everything but the girl. Uh, am I still? Not well, entirely, but in the in when I was a little kid, I used to love them. Um, so I had a look in the sessions, and I'm going to be perfectly honest with you, listeners. I don't really know this track very well right. that I've chosen. Is that too honest? No, it's it, that's that's good enough. We skimmed through it, and this was the one that really uh, grabbed our ears. Yeah, our but it's from the period when when I used to love them. It's called Ballad of the Times. This is everything but the girl from 1985. Uh, from the Peel Sessions. Check this out. There we go. Uh, everything but the girl there. Uh, well, that was a, a rather a lovely tune called Ballad of the Times. That's absolutely... Uh, absolutely. <laughs> what is my problem? Sometimes I launch into a speaking and it just it doesn't happen. Give it another go. It just doesn't happen. That was absolutely lovely, I thought. Yeah. And we were just talking about the fact that Tracy Thorne, the lead singer of Everything But The Girl, released a solo album earlier this year. Uh, late yeah, I was year. worrying there that, that, that in, the, in the small chance that either uh, Ben Watt or Tracy were listening, that would be a... That what I said about them would have been a kind of a spinal tap moment do you remember that moment in spinal tap yeah when they hear their record that's great to hear that one again <laughs> spinal tap uh, currently residing in the where are they now file i know and that was me saying about everything but the girl that i used to like them in the 80s and and uh, implying that i don't anymore and it's not true no it's not uh they're, they're very successful and they're you know still very successful they've had an amazing career every time you thought they might have uh, be sort of uh, fading a bit they've come back stronger than ever <laughs> yeah <laughs> why are you laughing because i made it sound downbeat again haven't i <laughs> Oh, Just, <laughs> <laughs> now it's good enough to say that uh they they're a great band yeah they're a great band and well we done them. well done um now what were we just talking about oh yeah songs to wake up to we were talking about that. yeah yesterday uh we were talking about what the best alarm clock sound was and we had a bit of an alarm clock war uh i came up with the most violently aggressive one adam had a lovely and soothing one but we got an email from a guy called nick he doesn't give us any more information than that it's just nick uh he is talking about the fact that he wakes up to a song i guess he must program his clock radio or whatever or his cd player or mp3 player maybe his <laughs> personal computer yes to wake him up to a song and the song he chooses is welcome to the jungle by guns and roses oh man. and here's nick's description of what happens when he wakes up it starts with a kind of grating slash guitar noise but it holds within it warm 80s memories which in a dazed awakening state make you think this song rocks but what is it even though you woke up to it every day for the last three weeks the grating builds but you've got only about 10 seconds before the howling starts <laughs> if you're not quick enough you've reached level two normally you're up by now and you've turned the howling off but if you haven't you know it must be the weekend and you can either progress to level three the screechy axel singing with your head buried under the pillow or you can shout along while you make a brew and wake the rest of the house up so there you go he's broken down welcome to the jungle into kind of stages of awakening well it's good to have a nice long intro for a track there if you're waking up to it yeah. something like you know uh stone roses i want to be adored which starts off with a, a sort mm. of wash of ambient noise and weird sounds like clangs and factory sounds or something and then gradually the guitars come in ging, 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 and then the bass it's very slow it all takes mm. about over a minute that particular song might soothe me back to sleep though 
I it's a bit too trippy. A, yeah, but it gets... Yeah, maybe you're right. I'd have a sort of acid flashback. Yeah. Not that I've got anything to flash back to. <laughs> and I fall back to sleep. But can you suggest, listeners, the perfect song to wake up to? Wake Up Boo by the Boo Radleys. Not that one. That's the one you're not allowed to suggest. What about Walking on Sunshine by Katrina and the Waves? No. Uh, it's Got to Be Perfect by Fairground Attraction. No, you're not allowed any of those. Anything by Sixpence, None the Richer. Text your suggestions to 64046, or if you don't have a mobile mobile phone you can email adamandjoe.6music at bbc.co.uk i wonder how this one by the charlatans would work this is love nice. is the key love is the key you see by the charlatans that's it, true you know you know it is true it is and it can be used as a key replacement as well if you ever, really yes. if you're locked out if you're locked out what do you do you just love the door you have to love the door but you have to love it to such an extent and a lot and it's a very difficult thing to do because is it really when you get locked out your natural impulse is toward fury yeah, towards hate and frustration mm. and mm. uh mild depression and it's very hard to get to a place really? it's very hard to get to a place where you really love where you love the, the door lock. you're you're just talking you're not talking about making love to the door yeah are you <laughs> that's what i'm saying wow it's there's a lot of difficult things about it wow well there we go there's some useful locksmith information uh, courtesy of the charlatans yeah um okay we we were asking you what the best song to wake up to would be and li literally we're talking about like an alarm clock song a song that would uh, play in your ears just as you reach consciousness in the morning and we've been inundated with suggestions <laughs> go on then joe when i say inundated i mean six we got three yeah uh, <laughs> but you can continue texting to uh six four zero four six uh here's one okay you ready yeah go on then. you are you ready though to get closer yeah uh this is anonymous please Try and put your names on your text when you text in, because it's Ooh. nice to put a, put a name to the words. Little What's bit, the matter? A little bit passive. A little bit touchy. A little bit aggressive. Okay, this comes from an anonymous person. I wake up to Sex Machine by James Brown. <laughs> Think about it. Yeah. He spends the whole song shouting, Get up! That's and like true. a sex machine, no less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get on up. That's true. I think that's a good choice. Not too aggressive. Good. Kind of rhythmic. It keeps you perky. Yeah. Uh, inspiring. Uh, here's another one. You ready for another one? Yeah. Sarah in Manchester says, Wake up, you're dead, by faith no more. No going back to sleep after that. Wake up, you're dead. Yeah, I it, don't know that bit, track, it's actually. It's a bit gloomy. Faith no more. Hmm. Well, we'll have some more of those in a second, but first, here's Super Furry Animals just before the news with Show Your Hand. Amylase, uh, that's a new product that dries out plaster faster than any other plaster drying product can. <laughs> that was Cajun Dance Party, which I think is a little bit misleading as a name for the band. You know, because you get excited about a Cajun Dance Party... And you don't get anything of the sort. What was he singing about? You're the catalyst that makes things faster. Amylase dries out plaster. It's a building song. It's a song for builders. <laughs> and Is it? Is Amylase yeah. an actual product? I would imagine In so. In which case, we shouldn't be playing it on the Big British Castle. <laughs> That's true. It might be a coded, you know thing we can talk to claire privet about this she is our serial thriller provider today and she works in the advertising industry <sighs> claire how are you doing are you there good morning how are you fine very fine. well thank you and you're in southeast london today is that right i am i'm very lucky to live here yes indeed. Where, whereabouts in southeast london uh claire? um hit the green lovely near, sort of blackheath lewisham very nice well done congratulations okay. doing pretty well <laughs> gotta be doing pretty well it's all right. Uh, and you're at home getting ready to go to work. What time do you have to be at work, Claire? I have to be at work at 9.30, so it's not too bad. And uh, home by what time? Oh, gosh, about 7 ish. Really? Um, and uh, what, yeah, kind of a day, what kind of a day is it going to be? Is there anything you're, you're worried about? Today? I don't get worried about things. Really? I take it in my stride, do you? absolutely. No big accounts giving you any problems there, Claire? Well, they always give me problems, but I can handle it. Yeah. You know, we're available. Are you? Yeah, for anything. Pretty much You're anything. Quite cheap. We'll advertise anything. Well, oh, great. I've heard that actually. We no, don't, we're expensive actually. Uh, we'll we, get you on our book. Yeah, good if one. you would. We yeah. don't advertise actual murder. That's the no. only thing we don't uh, do. But pretty much anything. Oh, yeah. but we have a need for that right now. So anything, okay. anything that pollutes the environment. Uh, yeah. Anything that exploits kids, we're there. We were, That's what uh, we're into, actually. We so charge well. a little bit more for that sort of stuff, but okay. uh, pretty much okay. we can we can work it out. Uh, you, what's your favourite film, Claire? I have quite a few, but I just I do love With Now and I. Mm. Come on, you can't beat With Now and classic. I. It's a classic. If you met someone who mm. and you were talking about With Now and I, and they said that film that's rubbish don't know why everyone goes on about it you'd, you'd be what would you do 
I mean, I mean. Well, I would just think they don't. They just don't know what they're talking about. Really. Exactly. How old are you? Do you mind me asking, Claire? You can't I'm ask 34. that. Thirty-four. I've just turned thirty-four. Thirty-four. Okay. So you would have been a little bit young to go and see it at the cinema, right? Uh, yeah, probably just about. Yeah, but yeah, I've just been watching it. But that is a film that made for a long time. Right. That's a film that made a massive impression on me when it came out. I went to see it at the cinema, and I was. So you're a bit older then, are you? Yeah, a little bit. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Man, I was literally, I was falling off my seat laughing. Literally yeah. fell off my seat into the Did you aisle. literally I fall literally off your seat? fell off my seat wow. laughing. Wow. Wow. It was amazing. What a, what a story. I know. I was <laughs> in the aisle. I was rolling around. I thought, it's a little bit sticky down here. I'm going to get back on my seat. What but kind of a cinema were you in? I tell you exactly where I was. I was in uh, Shaftesbury Avenue and, uh, no, the Haymarket, Lower mm. Haymarket. Mm. What's that one mm. called? Mm. Anyway, I can't remember. But, wow. Yeah, what a film. Favourite moment from that film, Claire? It's really difficult, isn't it? Because there's so many, but I guess it's most of them Uncle are, Monty. I most like of it. them are quite sweary. Uncle Monty, yeah, yeah. he's got Uncle some of the Monty. best best swearing bits in the in the whole he film. He has, he's uh, just filthy in it. Yeah. <laughs> but listen, Claire, tell us what two songs you've chosen uh, for us to have breakfast to this morning. Well, I just played a couple of tracks I was listening to the other day. Claire, it was you, quite good, hang on a second, Claire. You keep talking into your bra. And into my bra. Yeah, whatever you're doing there, it's getting a bit Is muffly. That better? That's perfect. Okay. So I've just chosen a couple of tracks I was listening to recently. I've got The Cure in Between Days and New Order Regret. <laughs> Great choice. That was, yeah, exactly. The Cure in Between Days and Regret from New Order. Fantastic choice. And, uh, Claire, thank you very much indeed for, for being our serial Thanks for that. today. No hey, and are we right in saying you, you are due to give birth soon? In January. In January. Yeah. Do you know what it's going to be, a boy or a girl? I don't know. You don't know. I the, have no idea. The miracle of the surprise baby person. After all that, I want a surprise. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, listen, well, best best of luck. Absolutely. Thank it's it's wonderful. Much. And Thank thanks you. for your choices. What are we going to play first? We're going to play um, The Cure, In Between okay. Days. Hello, this is Adam and Joe. We're here on Six Music, filling in for Sean Keevney uh, for the rest of this week and all of next. Yeah, it's 8, uh, 15, 16, 17, 18. It's 8, 18. Joe Time Check Cornish. Yeah, love just, to just in time case, check. you know, it's the morning that knowing what time it is is very important. And you join us just as Joe Cornish is trying to steal the last biscuit from Jenny. Yeah. Who is one of the Jenny, uh, our, our, our lovely helper lady, has <laughs> bought in three Gary Ball. Are they Gary Baldies? They're a bit like Gary Baldies, but they're, they're squash more fly biscuits. Yeah, yeah, they got Yeah, I haven't had one of those for raisins. years, and they are amazing. Is it a fl are flies really sweet? <laughs> to, to the taste, are they? Does anyone know? Oh, flies. No, they're not sweet. They're, Aren't they? They're no. bitter. Uh, also, you should never eat them. They carry disease. Do they? I don't know if you knew that or not. Is disease sweet? <laughs> well, funnily enough, do some diseases can be tasty. Mm, a little bit tasty. So listen, we've been asking you to text in your be uh, your suggestions for the best song to wake up to. This is if you live in a kind of a War Games stroke Ferris Bueller style uh, environment where you can have your computer cue a song or something like that in the morning. So are you ready for some of these, Adam? Yeah, please hit me. The perfect, this is from somebody called 90 in Leeds. Mm -hmm. His name is actually a number. Joe Nine 90, zero. we had a, we yeah. spoke to him the other there day. There we go. Yeah. The perfect wake-up song is the digital hardcore remix of Crash Power by everyone's favourite Japanese techno metalers, Mad Capsule Markets. You may never sleep again. Mm. So he's going for the... There's, there's two approaches to this. There's the soothing kind of approach, yeah. wake up with a lovely optimistic song, or there's kind of like the hardcore in at the deep end, cold shower, like metal attack, noise attack. That's for the youngsters, though, you know? The they, older you get, the more soothing you, you think? want it to be, surely. We don't know people's ages here, but uh, Johnny is saying, how about Higher State of Consciousness by Josh Wink? That's Wakes me up one. every time. Yeah. Yeah, again, I'd, I'd be worried about kind of uh, acid flashbacks there. Beep, 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 beep. Hello, Adam and Joe. I'd like to suggest Albatross by Fleetwood Mac as a wake-up track. Mm. Eases you into the day and you glide like a bird all day. That's true, and That's it? lovely. That is a lovely That's song. That's from Jay. Uh, Let's Go Crazy by Prince. Yeah. You uh, know, a good one that I would like to wake up to what? is Who Loves the Sun by The Velvet Underground. You know what I'd wake up to? What? Fantastic Day by Heck Up 100. That's a good idea. You know? I yeah. think that, that would be solid goal. What's the beginning of that? Oh, no, no, I'm thinking of Love Plus One is a nice... Do, 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 do. No, that's Love Plus One, yeah. yeah. That's lovely, though. Yeah, do, 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 do. Is that Love Plus One as well? I can't yeah. remember. Anyway, uh, and here's one from Cameron in Leeds. I used to wake up to the opening chords of Jeff Wayne's War of the Worlds at university. Do, do, do. I was a very heavy sleeper, and the only way to remedy this was to scare myself awake. Yeah, that would be a good one. I tell you, another one is Twenty Seconds to Comply. Yes, remember that one? Yeah. Now, who's that by? That sort of um, jungly trip hop group. Oh, 
forget. Uh, we'll find out. Yeah, that, that's intense, though. Yeah, that starts off with the sample from Robocop, Ed 209, yeah. saying, Please put down your weapon. You have 20 seconds to comply. Uh, the Russian national anthem wakes you up right in the morning, says uh, Ryan. What's the Russian national anthem? I love Russia, yes I do, yes I do. I love Russia, yes I do, yes I do. And you love Russia as much as I do. We love Russia, yes we do, yes we do. That's correct. And that's it. Uh, that's the end of that text competition uh, with that stirring rendition of the national anthem. Uh, we're going to close that one off because soon it's time for Text the Nation. <gasps> and don't forget we've got a re-jigged jingle. A re-jingle. With some extra information for the jingle of Text the Nation. Yeah, this is only because somebody complained by email <laughs> yesterday that the Text the Nation competition was non-inclusive to non-mobile phone owners. And uh, as you know, here at the Big British Castle, it's our mission to be inclusive. We wish to include everyone. Yeah. And, of course, you're, you're welcome to communicate with us any way you wish when we launch Text the Nation. It doesn't have to be just by text. And that no. will be made clear to you once yeah. you hear the jingle. Yeah. But now, here's the lovely Lily Allen. Is it true that just the physical act of smiling makes you happy? That's, it is true. Is it, it true it yeah. kind of stimulates blood vessels in the happiness nodes, synapses of the brain? Yeah. Yeah. So everybody out there, even if you're not happy, just, just have a go at smiling. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> Does that make you ha happy? Even if it's insincere. You it'll, have a go at it. It'll work Boston. eventually. It'll work eventually. <laughs> a smile is my natural... I'm smiling right now. If you fake a smile, yeah. you, you can't fake a smile, can you? That Look at that. You can't. That just look so evil. Yeah, it does. It does look it, like the Joker. A fake smile does look evil. You end up looking like Richard yeah. James, Aphex Twin. Yeah, or Itchy the Killer. Yes. Yeah, have you seen that film? That's right. You oh. look like a kind of clown killer. But um, it's it does work. You know, sometimes when you're doing voiceovers and stuff like that, they say, come on, smile. And uh, it's, it just sounds like you're smiling. Could it put a smile in your voice. Okay, so I, I tell you what, introduce this next song now uh, with no smile. Okay. And then do it again with a fake smile, and let's see if we can tell the difference. Okay. So, no smile. Uh, this is my breakfast single of the week. It's the fantastic new single from Spoon called The Underdog. With a smile. This is my <laughs> uh, new single of the week. It's, it's working. It's working, isn't it? <laughs> this is Spoon with the underdog. It's a peach. That's Spoon with the underdog. This is Adam and Joe on Six Music. Now, here's the news read by Joe and Catherine. <laughs> the Smiths with Big Mouth Strikes Again. This is Adam and Joe, BBC Six Music, filling in for Sean W. Keevney. Uh, ooh. Sorry, I got distracted by a huge crane moving past the window in a, in a surreal fashion. Oh, yeah, it looked as if the, the crane, the, the big metal hook bit, was just about to smash into the window. Yeah, that was a kind of a Godzilla moment. Yeah. Um, now, it's nearly time to play Text the Nation, our exciting new quiz uh, that we're very, very proud of. I think the whole play and quiz element is probably over overstated, <laughs> there, don't you? <laughs> well, we got to use some kind of words to describe it. Makes it. it sound like a is fun it a quiz? game. It's not a quiz, is it? It's not. What is it? What can we describe it it's as? It's an opportunity to communicate yeah. with It's people. basically the same old rubbish we've been doing all morning, <laughs> all morning, but with a new sort of name. <laughs> with a slightly different yeah, name. Yeah, to try and differentiate things. Uh, so, uh, you may remember that yesterday, Adam uh, created an, an extraordinary compelling tr uh, trail like jingle for this segment of the show. And we had a complaint from a listener. And don't ever let it be said that we don't take listener complaints, listener complaints seriously here. We take them very seriously. It was stated that we were uh, prejudiced against those who were not, who, who did not have text capability. Yeah. Not true. You can Textist. You can uh, communicate with us in any way that you wish by email. You can, uh, you know, write you sky writing. It doesn't matter. So he insisted that we adjust the jingle to include uh, people without mobile phones, people who emailed. So, are we ready? Are we going to unveil the new jingle, the new adjusted jingle? Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. So you see, it's quite clear that yeah, yeah, that it's not a problem. Yeah. <laughs> If you want to use email, <laughs> text the nation. Everybody, you know what? Is everyone happy now? I miss yesterday's jingle when the woman said, uh, when it went, text the nation, text, text the nation. And the woman went, um, uh, I don't want to. And the other woman went, it doesn't matter. That's all in there. It's still in there. <laughs> is it? It's still Did in there. Did she say it doesn't matter? Doesn't matter. Text. 
Really? At the end, yeah. <laughs> At the very end. When you say woman... You could just so. play it once more. <laughs> it's you doing a lady voice, isn't it? No. Or is it just a... Here we go. Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. <laughs> oh, yes. You're right. I missed it. Wow, there. it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> so today on Text the Nation, we are talking about mm. things that your parents go off on one about. Yeah, like elements of pop culture that your mum and dad or older relatives just cannot compute. They don't understand. You know, it's like moments when you're watching the telly. Uh, obviously, this is for younger listeners, but it used to happen to me when I was a kid. I'd be watching something on the telly. My dad would open the living room door. He'd look at the telly. He'd look at me and he'd go, what is this nonsense? Yeah, exactly. Oh, Blake Seven. What a load of rubbish. Don't understand how you can watch this piffle. Why are you watching it? Oh, my God. For, for, for my dad, it was, it was uh, Noel Edmonds. Really? He couldn't stand Noel Edmonds. And now we have my dad on the line. Nigel Buxton is, is with hey, us. Hey, before we, just before we speak to Nigel, let's yeah. just give the text uh, number. is 64046. You can email adamandjoe.sixmusic at bbc.co.uk. This is a national survey. We want to know uh, the pop culture figures people doesn't necessarily have to be completely pop cultural but just people in the public eye and also things as well who your parents cannot tolerate who who really wind them up who they've got a thing for now dad are you there i'm here hello nigel it's joe here uh, uh, good morning joe very nice to hear you i have to say as well that i would not normally call my dad dad i would normally call him daddy well, call him Daddy. But as we're on... <laughs> we, we've we discussed this before on the okay, radio. What you like, as long as it's fairly polite. H uh, Holmes? Can I call you Daddy, Nigel? <laughs> By all means. Thank you very much. By all means. So, um, has Adam explained the purpose of our, uh, of our call today, Nigel? Yeah. So, what's the, uh, what's, what are the things or people that you tend to go off on one about? Um, I should think top of my list is... Um, well, pretty near the top of my list is Bob Geldof. Bob Geldof. We were talking about Bob yesterday, saying that his daughter, Peaches, seems to be uh, the new bet noir of the tabloids. Now, uh, Nigel, we, without saying anything libelous or uh, at all rude, why is it that Bob Geldof makes you so upset? Uh, I think he's one of the leaders of what I call the great unwashed look. Um, that's not the, the main reason he curdles the milk on my cornflakes. I'm, <laughs> I'm not going as far to suggest that he's insincere about his views on African poverty, but uh, what gets me is that he's turned humanitarian concern into a colossal showbiz PR exercise. Mm. Um, and what's worse than that, he bangs on about debt relief in, a, in not only a very simplistic, but I think rather ignorantly harmful way. Uh, the people who really know about the problem of African poverty uh, pretty well agree that what Africa needs is political reform. Mm. So, do you get these? I mean, do you get these feelings when you just set eyes on him, Nigel? If you yes, see him I on do, telly, it makes you angry. Had so much exposure in the last few years that one can't avoid him. But he's just trying to uh, communicate these problems in a way that he feels the the largest amount of people will be able to deal with and understand. What's wrong with that? Uh, uh, what's wrong with it is it obscures uh, what is really necessary. Mm. Uh, you see. Uh, uh, political reform, which is what Africa needs, is not sexy. Right. Um, no. Uh, 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 in fact, weirdly, where... Uh, is something that anyone can understand. You just say to someone who owes you a lot of money, well, don't bother to pay it back. And uh, that's some something forms, that yeah. his fans can relate to. Some forms of... Uh, everyone, and including himself, feel pretty good. Right, right. Some forms of debt relief are quite sexy, I find. So who, who, who I'll else... I'll tell you another one. Yeah. Uh, 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 you asked me, after mm. all. Mm. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, another one it, without going into Boris Johnson. Right, OK, right. Boris Johnson. So without going into any actual policies, uh, what, would you, what, what are the things, superficially, that drive you mental about Boris? Uh, he, he takes us all for, for, for fools. He, he, he himself is very well educated, uh, which most Etonians are. Uh, he knows it. So he thinks he can afford to be flippant about things which the rest of us uh, are usually rather serious about because we ought to recognise that behind the 
bumbling buffoon with a superior intelligence and a needle-sharp brain. Mm. It, it, it's a kind of conceit, really. And what, um, what, sort of, uh, what sort of words are you likely to use, say, if you're flicking through the channels, Nigel, and you come across Boris Johnson? What kind of exclamation are you likely to make? Exclamation of what? What exclamation? What 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 are you likely to say to to, to express your um your your dislike of of Boris Johnson? Uh, he's uh, in the way he comes across. He's a phony. He pretends to be uh, a, a buffoon, and in fact, he's a, a shrewd, uh, self-interested, calculating politician. So you would plump for uh, buffoon and phony for Boris uh, Johnson who a lot of people really like and some people see as the acceptable face of conservatism. How, do, how have your feelings changed about Noel Edmonds, or have they? Um, no, I think Noel Edmonds is fairly harmless. I don't like people with um, uh, his kind of beard. <laughs> uh, Listen. And his kind of hairstyle. And <laughs> Nigel, I, I think we'll keep, you, we'll, we'll keep you hanging on there if that's OK, but, but we should go to some music. This is Maximo Park with girls who play guitars. This is Adam and Joe here on Six Music, covering for Sean Keaveney, and we're right in the middle of Text the Nation, an amazing feature where we ask people to communicate with us about a thing. It's it's like a survey. Mm -hmm. That's my angle. It's right. like a national survey. National survey. We have some of the nation's top brains listening to this program. That's true. Half a million of the cleverest people in the country, and we tap their, you know, collective hive mind. Ooh. Yeah? Hive mind. So we, well, our proposition today is... Uh, about your parents or your uh, older relatives, what people or aspects of modern life and pop culture make them really angry? We were just talking to my dad there, Nigel Buxton, a.k.a. Bad Dad, and he was going on about a couple of his pet hates, Bob Geldof and, and uh, Boris Johnson, and they are two people that as soon as they pop up on TV, he'll just immediately explode with you know that phony oh that we've had a nice text though that says your dad is so sweet i have a great dad but i want another one now and i want your dad to be my second dad and he's right you know about bob and boris idiots oh i don't know about it I mean, i've got a lot of time for both uh, boris and bob do you know what i mean it's hard it's hard isn't it to it's just hard it's very hard it's so hard listen here here are some other texts that have come in my granddad this is from tom in wet romford my granddad cannot stand the simpsons right. quote all those stupid yellow cartoon chaps turn that rubbish off <laughs> that's exactly the kind of thing we're looking for tom that sort of instant dismissal yes exactly of something that millions and billions of people adore no time for it whatsoever. Yeah, only and, only older people can get away with that kind of thing. And sometimes it's it's because they really have thought about it. Sometimes it's just because it sort of hits them at the wrong <laughs> angle. I like the respectful use of the word chaps there, Tom. Mm. All those stupid yellow cartoon chaps. Uh, here's another one from Chris in Aberdeen. And this is uh, a, a kind of dislike that maybe uh, a lot of us might share. Uh, my mum despises Ray Quinn. And who could blame her? as he is a ventriloquist dummy Who now he's the, he's the kind of young karuna from the x factor <laughs> you know the one you don't watch that kind of thing do you adam karuna he nearly won the uh, he nearly won the x factor and he does he looks like a sort of evil ventriloquist dummy oh. as that text has said right uh, but I'm sure he's a very sweet chap. But there we go. Uh, no Chris, time for Ray Quinn. Chris and Aberdeen's mum hates Ray Quinn. Uh, if you can, like, quote anything your parents would say, that's what personally I love to hear, the actual kind of phrase or yes. sentence your parents would say in disgust. Yeah, my dad, with Noel Edmonds, it was always, that bearded creep. <laughs> <laughs> what did your dad say about his beard? Anybody with that kind of beard? Well, I think he's got a real problem with people that don't shave in general. Right, with and beards in general. He doesn't like me. I've got a beard at the moment, and uh, he, he, like he, he sort of holds himself back from actually criticising the beard. For a few weeks after he first saw me with it, he kept on saying, what is that for? But that people What's say it for people sort of say that to me anyway. <laughs> well, it's to, to nest birds. I'm breeding a rare species of, of tick. I think his theory is that if you've got a beard or or you don't shave, it shows that you're a lazy person, feckless person. Mm -hmm. Also, you're hiding something. I agree with him. That's the gist of it for my dad. We'll talk to him a bit later on about that. Beard is is a whole uh, uh, other factor. He, here's a really good one uh, from an anonymous texter. Um, saying that I think he or she has a parent or elderly re elderly relative who complains about anybody with a fringe which hangs lower than their eyes. Mm -hmm. Quote, 
covering up their lovely face. <laughs> That's what and my mum used to say. significantly raising the risk of conjunctivitis. <laughs> right. Back it up with a little medical Yeah, brilliant, threat. brilliant, brilliant. Exactly. So keep those texts coming in. The text number is 64046. It's important uh, that you all text us immediately with your best stories of people or things in popular culture that your parents dismiss out of hand. We might try and uh, get my dad back on the line in a few minutes, but first, here's Booker T and the MGs. It's a smash. Booker, Booker T. T and, yeah, let's both say it. And the MGs. And the MGs. I was, was going to say, say Booker T and the Memphis group to, like, be, a, to be a bit of a sort of show-off musocrat. Oh, wow. Yeah, because that's what MG stands for, yeah? Um, um, I'm not going to say anything else now. Good morning, listeners. This is Adam and Joe on the uh, BBC Six Music Breakfast Show, filling in for Sean Keaveney. Uh, it's nearly news time. It's nearly the top of the hour. But before we do that... Uh, we're talking about people or things in popular culture that your parents or elderly relatives kind of dismiss out of hand, that they kind of hate. Uh, and here's a good kind of spin on this. Kate Humphrey in Rugby has uh, uh, sent us an email that says, My granddad dislikes quite a few people in the public eye, but it's the names he calls them that I find funny. Barbara Strident. <laughs> Eric Clapped Out. <laughs> Michael Flatfeet. I could go on, but I have to get to work. I wish you had gone on, Kate. That's really true, isn't it? Like mums and dads uh, kind of inventing dismissive comedy names for things. I remember whenever I was watching Top of the Pops uh, and my dad would come into the front room and he'd go, not Top of the Flops. <laughs> <laughs> I think every parent calls Top of the Pops Top of the Flops, don't they? Yeah, that's genius. Right now, here's Candy Payne. Uh, after the news, we will be talking once again to my dad and continuing to find out some more things that make your parents froth at the mouth. BBC Six Music. Adam and Joe. Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. There we go. Uh, that's the new, the brand new jingle. Today's new jingle for Text the Nation, our uh, amazing sort of survey section of the show. We've had an email from the person who complained yesterday. Uh, the person responsible for having the jingle changed. His name is Chris. His uh, email goes like this. Wow. The new jingle is amazing. I feel so proud of myself for complaining. This is going on my CV as an achievement. Quote, successfully negotiated change of jingle on popular radio show. It's very nice of you to use the word popular there. Chris, and thanks very much for your interventionist behaviour. Now, we're talking about things that make your parents go into a, a, a kind of furious ranting state. Have we got any more uh, text yes, stroke emails have. there? We've got lots. OK, here is a good one from Lindsay. Uh, my mum hates Linda Bellingham. When she was in the gravy ads, the mum would growl, Oh, for Christ's sake, <laughs> at the telly. I've no idea what the root of her loathing was. Oh, for Christ's sake, <laughs> Bellingham. I don't know. I don't think you need logic for that. Yeah, but she caused a sort of visceral reaction in many people, I remember. Bellingham, yeah. OK, here's another one from Tom in Canterbury. My dad hates all hip-hop and thinks anything that has rapping in it is the Fugees. <laughs> <laughs> Turn this Fugees rubbish off <laughs> is an oft-repeated demand. That's brilliant. <laughs> all rapping is the Fugees. <laughs> uh, here's another one from abby in edinburgh my mum goes into a spitting ball of fury at the mention of celine dion and her quote massive smug nose <laughs> <laughs> and Catherine zeta jones yeah. she says oh she's got a greedy beefy cleavage <laughs> <laughs> a greedy beefy cleavage that's good though isn't it isn't she's good right thing? your mum's a genius abby <laughs> parents are so clever they've lived they know these things they, can, they understand they can detect these things my dad always used to have this thing he said when he saw someone he didn't like uh it used to be jan leeming a lot when the news yeah. came along uh, in the olden days and it was being read by jan leeming oh Jan Leeming. <laughs> I'm putting her in my leaky boat in the North Atlantic. Wow. He had a leaky boat that he put people in. Uh, Noel Edmonds was going in there. He's going in the leaky boat. That's nice because it, it, it's almost kind of viciously horrible. He's almost saying, I want to kill the person. Right. But actually, he's putting them in a leaky boat, so they do have a, a <laughs> minor chance <laughs> of survival. Chance. They're in jeopardy, but they might be able to paddle to safety if they change their ways. Now, let's play a little bit of music. Joe, this is your free choice, and then after this, I think we'll try and raise my dad. Again. I'm a bit worried about this, listeners. Um... 
I've got a secret problem with the the Paul McCartney album, Pipes of Peace. Right, i.e. the problem is you love it. I love it. And uh, I've got a secret problem with this track from the Paul McCartney uh, <laughs> album, Pipes of Peace. It's called The Other Me. Uh, you know, I'm not saying this is a masterpiece, but, I, you know, this if, if I have a guilty pleasure, yeah. not that we like that phrase, this would be it. And I can only apologise for inflicting it on you. I didn't know... Uh, the staff here would actually pull it out and make me play it. <laughs> so here it is. I love this, though. This is uh, Paul McCartney with the other me. Hello. Hey, this is Adam and Joe here, filling in for Sean Keaveney on uh, BBC Six Music. So, Joe Cornish, the other me there by Paul yeah. McCartney. Hello, mm. listeners. My name's Joe Cornish. Quite a I'd like to officially <laughs> apologise for making you listen to that. Uh, I like it. Yep. But then doesn't mean that you like it. So I'm really sorry, particularly do, 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 to Jason in do, do, Stockholm. Do, do, do. <laughs> he's listening in Stockholm and he's actually emailed in. No, sorry, you're wrong. This is dreadful. Please stop playing this and never, <laughs> ever play it again in private or public. Not even in private, <laughs> Jason in Stockholm. That's harsh. He's got a restraining you know order on it. I will obey you. All right, then. What now? Now, uh, Text the Nation, we are talking about things that uh, make your parents go into a fits of fury, and we've had a lot of texts and emails from people about various things that their parents uh, fly into a rage about. And most of them are now about stopping McCartney, actually. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we've had a whole flurry of stop this, stop it, stop McCartney. Can't Honestly. believe we played it the whole way through. <laughs> I suggested we come out of it early. I like I the dustbin lid lyric. Yes. <laughs> oh dear anyway yeah we've been uh, inviting you to text us in uh, as part of our text the nation uh, type thing uh, things in pop culture or the world that make your parents or grandparents incensed for no rational reason and um, we've got so many good ones here um here we go this is from uh, ollie in st ives my dad calls bill oddy odd billy <laughs> that's not so <laughs> insulting now that's fair enough isn't it here's another one from lizzie my mum hates tracy emin that dirty cow in that filthy bed <laughs> that's not art <laughs> but you she know, usually swears a lot more that's a good one my dad's <laughs> got a lot to say about Tracy man modern well. art is a real achilles heel for yeah. all parents surely they all go off on one about that yeah it's just a pile of bricks i mean it's ludicrous politicians are, are, are good targets for parents and elderly relatives as well lucian colchester says my late granddad used to go that tony blair you know what i call him Jelly Baby Blair. He's got no <laughs> backbone. Nice. I like that. Do you know what I call him before the reveal of the, of the name? Yeah. It's like teasing it a bit. <laughs> uh, here's something in reference to parents and grandparents. Uh, despisal of any beard or facial hair growth. Mm -hmm. Relating to what you were saying earlier, Adam. This is Sean in Labrick Grove. Uh, my dad says, why would I cultivate something on my face which grows wild around my bottom? Yeah, well, that's a fair point, isn't it? We'll talk to my dad about that in a second. But first, here's a bit more music. This is Beth Orton with Concrete Sky. That's Beth Orton with Concrete Sky. This is Adam and Joe here on Six Music. We have my father, Nigel Buxton, on the line to uh, to chat to us a tiny bit more about things that get him furious. H did you enjoy Beth Orton there, Dad? Yeah. Did you enjoy Paul McCartney before that? Paul McCartney. He didn't hear Paul McCartney before. Well, you... I'm not a great fan of... of uh... Paul McCartney, I'm afraid. Why, why not? What do you think of Paul McCartney? Uh, I think he's past his shelf life, really. Steady on. He was quite engaging about a hundred years ago as one of the Beatles, but uh, I think he's uh, he should have retired, really. That makes it sound like you used to really be into the Beatles, and now you Say think... Again? Oh, you're making it sound as if you used to really like the Beatles, but now you've gone off them. That's not the case, though, is it? Well, I think everything has its uh, time, and the Beatles were a long time ago. They were, they were rather engaging when they were young and fresh. Yeah. But uh, Paul McCartney really ought to have retired to a so, um, an island, I think. So, Nigel, let, can I just run past you some of the responses we're getting from our listeners here? Say um, again. I'm just gonna gonna read to you some of the responses uh, we're getting from our listeners. Okay. Uh, there's a listener whose mum hates... This is not a very good line, but... Oh, oh what, should we persevere? What? Can you... Can... <laughs> Here we go. Tracy Emin was one that came up. You, you have some fairly strong views on Tracy Emin, don't you? Yes, I think she is the nearest thing to poison that <laughs> I've seen on uh, in public for a long time. What's wrong with Tracy Emin? I think she's entertaining, and uh, uh, her stuff is funny. She's a tremendous fraud, like so much of the world of pop art. What about um, Paddy Ashdown? What do you think of Paddy Ashdown? Oh, he's all right. He's harmless. Ah, he's all right. Really. That's the closest thing uh, to I praise. I think, like um, uh, many 
a Lib Dems, he's um, not entirely plausible, but I think he's a, um, you know, he, he's um, mm. uh, an agreeable man. Mm. How about hip-hop music, Nigel? What do you think of hip-hop music? I don't know much about it, and I'm not very keen on, uh, you may be surprised, but I'm not very keen on giving my views on something I don't know anything about. Mm. So I, I don't really... The closest uh, you've been to hip hop was meeting Coolio back in LA when oh, we were. Oh, Coolio! Yes, well, he was he was good fun. Um, I can't pretend I'm a great fan of hip hop music, but I'm nothing against it. And oh, he was that's a nice shame. Guy. And finally, you've got a problem with people that don't shave. Well, yes, I hate uh, film actors and male models who think it's sexy not to wash and shave. Seems to me extremely perverse. <laughs> you're, su you're assuming that just because they have a little bit of stubble, they don't wash. I think most of them wash. They just cultivate a, a, a well, sort of Well, this is the trouble. One can't tell. If they can't be bothered to shave, uh, it's quite possible they don't bother to wash or use deodorant. I, there's something rather <laughs> creepy about them. How are you dealing with my beard at the moment? Well, I uh, uh, assume that your beard is for good professional purposes. <laughs> uh, it's not uh, because you think you look more beautiful with a beard. No. Uh, uh, possibly you do. But um, I put it down to a professional necessity. All right, fair enough. Hey, uh, Daddy, thanks a lot for calling us today, and thanks for talking to us. Thanks, Nigel. Good to speak to you. Bye now. Bye. Ha have a good day. Bye-bye. Thanks. Well, that's great stuff. That was bad, Dad, there, just weighing in on our epic text, uh, The Nation. We've had so many emails that we uh, and texts that we might have to do one more uh, little go at this after the next song. Uh, which is... Oh, what a peach. It's... Uh, I've, got, I've got to stop calling things peaches. Uh, this is a delightful plum from the House Martins and its sheep. Hooray, the House Martins there with sheep. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. Here are some more texts that have come in about things that make your parents annoyed for irrational reasons. Uh, you ready, Adam? Yeah, go on. Uh, hi, Chris in Aberdeen again. My dad once said he'd love to punch Jerry Halliwell in the face. That's a bit much, isn't it? Well, I didn't say it. Chris didn't say it. You know, Her usually, uh, usually the parents at least dress things up. You know, they put them in a leaky boat or they call them <laughs> funny names. It's not usually as direct as that. Well, that's what makes that quite exciting, that text. <laughs> Here's another one. Read from Oakham. Hello, Joe and Adam. My dad used to say, Neil Diamond, money for old rope. I have no idea why. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. Anyway, he's a genius. Jen in Soho, my dad gets enraged at the neighbour's theme and end credits before the six o'clock news starts. He turns mm. the sound off, tuts and groans at it. Yeah. That's fair enough. It's a dreadful noise. Tony Hatch, isn't it? Uh, it's something like that. It used to be. They remixed it, though, recently. That's right. Made it new. Uh, here's Tom again. Tom again. Tom, he must have texted before. My grandma hates anything on TV to do with space or sci-fi. I'm not watching that. It's just silly. <laughs> <laughs> says grandma. That is uh, a precise impression of Tom's grandma as well. And finally, Zoe says, My mam hates songs that have sirens in them. She thinks it should be against the law in case you get confused when you're driving. <laughs> 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 oh, don't we just love our mums and dads and our grands and grandpas? My mum got in an absolute fury the other day because she was watching Jonathan Ross's TV show and mm -hmm. the Arctic Monkeys were on there and they were performing in clown costumes. I don't know if you saw that. Oh. And she just got I incensed and she wouldn't shut up about it. I saw that because we went to see the Arctic Monkeys playing in France when we were there and they were amazing. And she was saying, oh, the Arctic Monkeys. Yes, I saw them on Jonathan Ross's program. They were dressed as clowns. I thought it was pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she's got, there's a name for clown phobia, isn't there? Yeah. Flora, some, there's a, the issue of the 14 times was all about it. Now, what's week. the problem with dressing like a, well, it was just pathetic, I thought. I mean, why? Well, just, but, you know, just for fun. Yes, but, oh, it was pathetic. I thought they looked silly. So, yeah, she wasn't having any of it. Mums and dads, eh? <laughs> what are you going to do Bye. with them? Hey. Hey. Oh, uh, this is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. It's uh, coming up to 9.30 and time for the news with Joe and Catherine. That's uh, Frank Black with Headache. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music filling in for Sean W. Keaveney while he's sunning his sexy body somewhere in Italy. Absolutely. We don't know exactly where. Eating sun-dried tomatoes. If we try, if we find out the location, we will give it out on air. Yeah, so just that so that he can be punished exactly. for his leisure. So if you're in Italy, you can go and uh, make friends with him. Okay, it's album of the daytime. Album of the day today is Oasis's classic What's the Story, Morning Glory. Cut uh, the star of that album? 
uh, Sean Rowley's shoes? Sean Rowley. Just, is it Sean Rowley? Yeah, with his oh, back to the camera. There you go. Walking down a street in London. I can't there remember which go. street it is. Uh, now, this track was released, uh, the album was released in 1995, it was their second album, and the follow-up to Definitely Maybe. Am I making this sound as if I'm just saying this off the top of my head? Yeah. 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 Uh, ask me some more stuff. Ask me uh, about whether the band are releasing a new DVD. Uh, yes, I'll... they are. Oh. On the 29th of October, it's called Lord, Don't Slow Me Down, and it's about the Don't Believe the Truth world tour, which took place from May 2005 to March 2006. Do you want a little name-dropping story now? Oh, I suppose so. I was at Dave Walliams' birthday party on the weekend. He's over. Walliams? I'm only joking. He's just <laughs> begun. Go on, keep talking. And uh, Noel Gallagher was there. He's over. He's... I I'm only joking. Yeah. Is he, is he gonna <laughs> I'm just jealous. Keep going. Right. And um, he, he shot me a look. Did he? He shot me a little look. Yeah. Wow. What did the look say? It said, uh, you. <laughs> and his, his girlfriend, Sarah, also shot me the same look. Uh, so you didn't talk to them you you prat it sounds like a great party <laughs> <laughs> but i got nice looks from everyone else and here's the thing uh david tennant doctor who yes he came up to me and he said hi uh, no david introduced me to david uh mm. tennant mm. Mm. and said oh this is david tennant do you know each other and david said yes yes we've met before haven't we shaking my hand <gasps> and i said oh, i don't i don't know if we have and he's like oh god no no i've just seen you on telly oh how embarrassing <gasps> to wow me. isn't that yes. exciting and you would think that i was, i'm easily the least uh well-known person out of that who question. who are you who exactly who are you that's what i'm asking and I got uh, nervous props off David Tennant. I was very happy. That's exciting, that. man. But listen, back to the album of the day, uh, Oasis with What's the Story, Morning Glory. The track we're playing is Hey Now, and you can hear further tracks from the album throughout the day here on BBC Six Music. That's the album of the day here on BBC Six Music. Uh, hey Now from What's the Story, Morning Glory by a band called Oasis. Oasis. Oh, it's you, you brat. Now, I did say we weren't going to go back to our fantastic text the nation thing, but we've had a couple of uh, texts that just have to be read out. Of course, we were asking listeners to let us know about things that infuriate their parents or grandparents. My gran, this is from Jay in Surrey. My gran goes through the paper and scribbles Victoria Beckham's face out. <laughs> <laughs> She's another good example, actually, of one that gets... I wonder what your parents. dad would think about Victoria Beckham. Yeah. I, I have enough trouble dealing with her, let alone if I was, like, over 70. What, what is the... Can you encapsulate the uh, problem you have with uh, Victoria Beckham? Well, you, you know, a word your dad uses a lot, Adam, is the word absurd. Yeah. And she is kind of the personification of absurdity, isn't she? She she looks absurd. Mm -hmm. She says absurd things. What she, she seems say? to she seems to lead a, an absurd life. Yeah. She launches absurd products. Products. Product. She is so absurd. She is so absolutely absurd. She's, she's, she's too thin. Uh, she's much too thin. <laughs> well, it's like a terribly racist accent. Uh, it wasn't intended to be, but it just sort of came so out that it way. it turned into one. Uh, I quickly changed the subject. Here's another email uh, on the same subject. Um, one of my dad's favourites is to comment on people on the TV, uh, comment on their physical defects. His favourite are bald people wearing wigs. So, for example, when an actor wearing a wig walks into any scene on any TV show, he'll be greeted by my dad shouting at the telly, Here he comes, Wiggy Van Wig. <laughs> nice he's really thought about that hasn't so he? when an actor's playing a detective it'll be followed up by oh yeah what are you gonna do about that viggy wiggy van wig <laughs> uh, wig 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 <laughs> wiggy wig the, wig the wig wig the wigster <laughs> wig wiggly wig, wig boy wig man now it's time for a free choice this is uh, one that i have selected for you is it another paul mccartney track off the pipes of peace you know i really wanted to play yeah. uh, just the same song that you played <laughs> so, the other me exactly the other me by paul mccartney from oh. pipes of peace so uh, you know i'm gonna play it again you're mocking for you. me aren't you i'm doing a little bit of mockery no it's by brendan benson and uh, brendan no benson mccartney. may be known to some people as one half of the raconteurs with jack white uh that's his side project his main project is just being himself just being brendan and this is from his excellent second album uh which i found out the name of and now i've forgotten again oh i'm such a jerk but it's a really i knew the name of the mccartney album. alternative to love yes i remembered and uh the song is called what i'm looking for hope you enjoy it 
This is Adam and Joe on Six Music, coming up to the last, like, eight minutes of our show, but they're going to be an amazing eight minutes because we've got that brilliant Edwin Collins track coming up and a little bit of Arctic Monkeys. <laughs> Joe's got his hood up on his top. Is that wrong? And he's wearing his headphones over the hood. He is looks, that wrong? He looks like, what do you look like? You look like Cool, a, Mr. Cool. That's what you look like. <laughs> you look like Mr. Cool. I was trying to think, who is it? Is it Mr. <laughs> Pratt? Is it Mr. <laughs> is it Mr. Nobles or is it Mr. <laughs> Mr. Cool? Nobles? I'm interested in Mr. Nobles. <laughs> it's a combination of Mr. Nobles and Mr. Cool. <laughs> oh, no, hang on. Now I get, now I get Mr. Nobles. <laughs> it's the beginning of the word Nobles, isn't it? I'm going home tonight and uh, when I get home, I'm going to uh, watch some TV. As exciting stuff. No. Okay, uh, here's a record <laughs> by... Um, no, what? The, Where's the, this going? The end of that was that while I'm watching TV, I'm going to be nervous because I've got new neighbours, right? Mm. And for the last few nights, when they get back from work, I'm assuming, they start doing all the... putting the house to rights, and mm -hmm. they start putting up pictures. So they're banging, 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 while I'm listening to the, uh, or watching the TV. Now, what is... Th so far, they have not gone beyond 9 p.m. with the banging. Mm. Would you say that's appropriate behaviour? What's the cutoff for putting up pictures? I think 9 p.m. is probably right. You've got to think of the children. Right. What time do children generally go to bed? Well, they go to bed way before 9 p.m. Well, then that's irresponsible. Uh -huh. They should know you've got young children and they should stop their banging, banging earlier in the evening. You know, sometimes before I had children and I was a less respectful member of the... Mm. Uh, society mm. when i moved into a flat i used to do a bit of late night putting up pictures but my technique to throw off the neighbors would be to do uh random banging do you know what i mean like, what do you mean like not regular i thought it would be more annoying if it was like <laughs> bang, bang, bang 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 so what i would do is bang 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 I tell you, a better bang, technique bang, bang. would be to be uh, <laughs> nailing in like seven nails simultaneously in different areas around the house uh -huh. and do one bang on each nail at a time. Ooh. You know, Get so... Your friends around. Yeah. It. Well, no, it'd be just like moving around the house. Oh, okay. So there'd be a bang in the wall in the front room, then suddenly one <laughs> in the attic. And just as they were complaining about that one, you know, you get my drift. Yeah, that hey, would confuse them. Listen, here's this uh, fantastic new single by Edwin Collins. Uh, this is You'll Never Know. Fantastic. Uh, this is Edwin Collins with You'll Never Know. And he's got a new album coming out, his sixth solo album. It'll be out on the 17th of September, and it's called Home Again. And I personally am very excited about that. It's a kind of a Philly soul sound. Yeah, I love the sound of that. Very good. Uh, this has been Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. Thanks for listening. Uh, thanks to everybody who's texted and emailed us. We'll be back again tomorrow morning. Believe it or not, believe it or not, at 7 a.m. Here's the Arctic Monkeys with Fluorescent Adolescent. Have a very fantastic day and stay tuned for Gideon Co. Bye.